Hey everyone, by the time this video releases, I will be on my way to Branson, Missouri. I'm taking a group there for four days and this is gonna be my first time in Branson. Now this is gonna be a very special trip because it's celebrating Peoria Charter's 80th anniversary and the president of the company, Bill Winkler and his wife Cindy will be riding along on my bus. Excited? You bet I am. Nervous? You bet I am. Will I be vlogging this trip? You bet I will. Now, if you haven't already, check out my other channel, J Wang Vlogs, which is where I post all of my bus adventure videos. I'll be putting the link of that channel down in the description box below. Now, on to today's video. What is going on all of you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. One of the best perks of being a coach bus driver, in my opinion, is getting to experience the different cuisines from all over the country. Coach bus drivers spend most of their careers driving long distances to unfamiliar places. Although some people do charter coach buses to do local shuttling for events as well as short distance trips. But for the most part, when someone charters a coach bus, their destinations are usually hours away. A charter bus driver's norm is to anticipate the unknown with long hours of driving while keeping a smile on their face for their passengers. It's up to the driver to make sure that everyone on board is safe, comfortable, and happy while trying to figure out how to get their coach bus in and out of places that their passengers want to go. It's not always an easy job. So when it comes to finding time to sit down and having a meal, especially on a long trip, it's not always as simple as it seems for the driver to be able to grab a bite to eat. Today, we're gonna to talk about how motor coast drivers find time to enjoy a meal when on a long trip. Motor coast drivers learn to be very resourceful when it comes to finding the right time and place to eat. Now, for the most part, charter trips typically leave drivers with a lot of free time on their hands to explore the area and find places to eat while their groups are off doing their thing for the day. However, when a group charters a bus to go on a multi-day trip that requires long hours of driving, the driver will have to be more creative when it comes to finding time to grab a bite. Now, what passengers don't realize is that a motor coach operator has a lot to do before he or she can get off the bus and take advantage of the short meal stops that passengers plan for their trip. Chances are when you the passenger start to feel hungry and are ready to stop to stretch your legs, your bus driver is probably ready for it as well. You see, during the hours that passengers spend leaning back in their seats, watching the onboard movie selections, snacking on their chips and Skittles, the driver spends those hours focused on traffic, making sure that they're taking the right exits and basically driving the bus. So when the bus finally arrives at whatever restaurant the passengers have chosen for their meal stop, the driver is undoubtedly ready for a bite to eat as well. Especially if there's still three to four hours of driving ahead of this meal stop, but not so fast. After dropping the passengers off, the driver still has a lot to do before he or she can leave the bus. Motor coach drivers are trained to always find the closest and safest place to drop off their passengers when they get to a stop of interest. So when it comes to restaurants, motor coach drivers will usually strive to pull the coach bus up to the front door of the establishment so that the passengers won't have to walk across any areas of traffic. Isn't he sweet? But what this also means is that while the passengers are in the restaurant ordering their food, the driver is usually still trying to find a place to park the coach bus because he or she can't simply leave this giant coach bus sitting at the front door blocking traffic. So motor coach operators try to find a place where the coach can fit that's kind of out of the way, as well as making sure that they don't get blocked in if cars decide that it's a good idea to park right in front of the coach bus. Sometimes that's a parking spot that's pretty close to the restaurant and sometimes it's not. But usually by the time the driver has parked the coach and walks into the restaurant, there's probably only 30 minutes left of this one hour meal break. Well, you might be asking yourself at this point, 30 minutes is enough time to eat, right? Well, yes, except that the 55 people on the bus have formed a pretty long line, which has also overloaded the cooks in the back. So by the time the driver actually gets to eat their food, the group will probably be getting ready to leave already. 
Now, we've all had those busy days where we had to scarf down a sandwich behind the wheel of a car, rushing to our next obligation. And when you drive a stick shift, that's what I call skills. But when it comes to operating a motor coach, for most companies, eating something like a sandwich or something that requires an eating utensil behind the wheel is kind of frowned upon. Now, there's no actual law that a commercial driver can't eat biscuits and gravy while driving passengers. At least, I don't think there is. But that just comes across as extremely unprofessional. And in my book, that kind of falls into the distracted driving category. The last thing I want to do is get gravy on my uniform. So where does that leave the driver as far as being able to enjoy a meal during the passenger's food stop? In this kind of scenario, if I notice that the meal stop is really short and there aren't a lot of parking options, I'll usually just decide to skip this meal so that the bus will be ready for my passengers as they're walking out to reboard. I've learned that just because the passengers are stopping to eat doesn't always mean that the drivers get to do the same. One of the things you get used to as a motor coach driver is that passengers don't always consider the drivers when planning out their trips. And as a professional driver, I will never ask the passenger or the group leader on board, hey, when do I get to eat? I never want to put the passengers in a place where I, as their driver, would be imposing on them. Now, don't get me wrong. If my passengers start to push my drive time or my on-duty hours to the point that I may run out of service hours, I'm going to speak up. But as a motor coach operator, you need to find that balance of catering to your passengers' needs, but without breaking the law. And if you put yourself in a position that affects your ability to drive the coach safely, then you're not doing your passengers any favors by not speaking up. So now, before you guys start leaving any angry comments towards motor coach passengers, please understand that this is not a rant. It's not the passenger's job to make sure the coach bus driver is comfortable and has time to eat along with the group. The passengers who chartered the coach bus are paying good money to hire a bus with a driver to get them to where they want to go. It's kind of like if you go to a restaurant to eat and your server asks you if you can wait on your meal for a bit because it's their break time. As a customer, that shouldn't be your problem. Well, as a professional motor coach operator, it's really up to you to look at your passenger's itinerary that they've submitted before the trip and assess when you'll be able to have meal breaks, as well as whether or not the meal stops the passengers are making will give you, the driver, enough time to order something. And if the itinerary does put you over hours, it's best to catch that before the day of the trip so that your dispatch can work it out with the group that's booking your bus. But at the end of the day, it's not our place as the driver to whine to the passengers that they didn't leave enough time for the drivers to eat. As I mentioned once in a previous video, when it comes to eating and rest breaks, most of the time the coach bus driver is at the mercy of the passenger's trip itinerary. The unfortunate fact is that most motor coach operators live on a very unhealthy diet. Combine that with the fact that our jobs require us to be sitting all the time, it makes for a very unhealthy lifestyle. I mean, if you think about it, in most cases, people who charter buses will choose fast food restaurants as a stopping point to get their meals. For the passengers on board, it's a very fast and convenient option. I mean, fast food restaurants are usually located right off the interstate, and that saves the group travel time. And even if fast food isn't a regular diet for the passengers, they can justify it as a special occasion because they're on a charter bus trip. But for the driver, it's probably their only chance to get a bite to eat, as they probably have another six to eight hours of driving ahead of them. And since this is what drivers are exposed to on the majority of their trips, a driver's diet consists of mostly fast food or junk food out of pure necessity. Now, some drivers do try to find healthier options during their fast food stops, but let's face it, a buffalo chicken wrap is a lot more easier and quicker to eat than a garden salad, which requires a knife, a fork, and all the different dressing packets and croutons and crackers to unpackage. I wasn't aware that you were a food critic. Some drivers who are more health conscious will pack their own meals, but there are no onboard refrigerators on most motor coaches, and it's up to the driver to make sure that whatever they bring will stay fresh during the long trip. But regardless of the driver's meal preferences, it's always a good idea for a motor coach operator to bring along some kind of snacks for the road. Snack foods that are inconspicuous to eat behind the wheel to tide them over on the long drive to their destinations, especially if the itinerary does not leave the driver enough time to have a meal on the way. 
Now, sometimes after doing my homework before a trip, I realize that the meal stops that the passengers have planned out is basically not going to be feasible for me to be able to grab anything to eat during their stop. But a driver can be pleasantly surprised sometimes. Some groups I've driven have asked me if they can get something for me while they're in line and bring it out to me. Sometimes a group will call the restaurant ahead of time to let them know to prepare for a bus full of people that will arrive in a few hours so that they can get their meals pre-ordered so that everyone, including the driver, can get their food in a more timely fashion. Some groups have even insisted that I go park the bus and come back and they will let me cut in front of the line so that I can order my food ahead of everyone else so that I, the driver, can have time to eat while everyone else is still ordering their food. As a motor coach operator, it's always very touching when a group that I'm carrying shows that they're thinking about me, even though it's not expected of them. Still, it is, however, very much appreciated. Whether it's offering the driver to join them for a meal or inviting the driver in to watch the ball game with the group, the driver may sometimes turn down the offer, but I guarantee you that they will really appreciate it because it's nice to feel the love. Having a group that seems to really care for the driver's well-being really takes a layer of planning and stress off the driver's day. And it really can form a great symbiotic relationship between the driver and his or her group. I mean, it's always the motor coach driver's job to take care of the passenger's needs and safety, but when the group goes out of their way to make the driver feel taken care of, the driver will usually go out of his or her way for the passengers as well. Well, folks, if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. If you haven't already, it will really help out the channel. If you're watching this, you are part of the motor coach world.